What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Madden Ultimate Team gameplay. In this gameplay, we're going to be playing Carry Q in the continuation of the Friday Night Football Tournament. Uh, in the last video, we just played Kiv. We barely won. This is round three. We're getting closer and closer to the end. And in this gameplay, man, I, I felt like I wanted to post it because Carry reminds me of like Madden 20 in this game. He, look at this stretch. Look at this dive. Motion back and forth. And uh, right there, obviously, it gets blown up. But the more you watch, the more you kind of feel a Madden 20 vibe. And honestly, it, it was very demonic, man. And, um, you know, it's a nice little... I mean, obviously, it's Madden 21 still. But it felt like Madden 20 in this game. Really, really, like, a lot. And uh, at, to this point, Kerry had beaten Decroft and Allen. And, you know, I thought, man, he might be back. Let's see how we do in this gameplay, boys. So you see right here, Kerry is on a third and three already. He audibles down to Deuce. I felt like I could have picked that off, boys. He ends up hitting a nice little flat route for 22 yards. See right here, Kerry is going to go back to the strong wing. And this time, he's going to run a power. And once more, I kind of blow it up. But trust me, guys, as the game goes on, you'll start to see these runs pop off. And once more, boys, he's going to audible down to Deuce Close. And this time, he runs a play action pass. And he honestly had that uh, little route right there. But there goes Kerry throwing in the coverage. I have DK Metcalf with mid zone KO. I really did think that was going to be interception. Um, obviously, it should have been, but it's all good. We're on a third down and 10, and I'm looking for a user rush here, boys. If he audibles down, I'm going to send the heat. And remember this play for the future, man. It's right here. We're going to come in. We almost get a pick with Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat is insane, boys, but um, ultimately it ends up being a fourth down and 10. But I just want you guys to remember that play for future reference. And by the way, guys, I am in the 4 6 playbook this game. Uh, I got a kind of scouting report that, yo, he's running the ball a lot. I'm really not going to run 146. And obviously, I, I say that, and he ends up going to gun trips offset right here. We decide to run man um, with some zone drops. See if he likes that or not. Hindsight, probably should have blitzed him or at least played zone with Mabel. But I decide to run man right here, man. And I have 25 flats, 10 purples, and I'm just mixing and matching as it go on. Probably should have put DK in a 25. I end up putting him in a 10. And I get dotted right there with Brandon Ayuk on Mike Evans. And Mike Evans being one speed slower, that's going to happen every time. See right here, he's going to stay in the trips tight end offset. Ends up throwing a nice RPO. And I like to do the same thing myself. Um, that RPO out of that tight end offset is really glitchy, boys. You guys got to hop on that and use it. It's right here once more, audibly down to the deuce close. And right here, he's actually going to run wham. And how often do you see that, boys? And that's why people don't run wham absolutely shot in the backfield a little backstory on carry man he always plays like this he's a toter um and he like he doesn't strictly only run but he does develop nice schemes that revolve running and passing so you know it's kind of tough to play him at times he plays at up tempo and he's been along for a while now so i mean a lot of you guys probably may or may have not heard of him um and that's kind of just some backstory on carry obviously you guys seen him in the dallas cowboys club this year and this game definitely doesn't benefit him or suit him quite a bit as last year did. It's right here. He's going to run at 0-1 trap. And what did I tell you guys in the beginning of the game? Very demon-esque type of game from Carey. Um, I do send two right there, and that was actually the proper play call. I should have made a tackle right there or even with Metcalf, but, I mean, he ends up getting the first. It's right here. He's in bunch tight end, and you guys actually think he's going to pass. Um, I'm kind of playing the run. I'm in man once again with some vert hooks. Um, a couple, you know, spies, excuse me, a couple purples is right here. We're going to play the run. He ends up actually passing. So great play call by him. Nothing really open. And that's kind of what I wanted my man coverage to do on that fourth down. Um, but it's all good. Here we go. We can hold him to three. It's right here. He is going to run with Jim Thorpe. And boys, tell me how he gets nine yards on this. He's going to audible back again. Some Madden 20-esque vibes. As you see right here, he's going to run a power good. But I was right there with the tackle. I don't have secure tackler on my user, but honestly, I don't need that to make that tackle. Ends up going from like a two, three yard gain to a nine yard gain. And right here, man, he is going to go up tempo um, and just basically catch me off guard. Look at me trying to adjust. I'm trying to adjust. I'm trying to get in a spot and I just completely bail out. Just actually play terrible defense. And there goes Jim Thorpe on the stretch. Looking like Madden 20, boys. So right here, boys, Kerry is actually in running nickel normal. He always runs that. Right here, George Kittle on the clear out dot. 
Taylor Mays actually made up some ground right there, but thankfully for us, we were able to hang on to it, even though we don't have like a deep in or deep out elite ability. And cover three, clear out, you can always throw versus cover three, like right in that sweet spot right there. But notice the defense carries running. He always runs a defense like this, man. Nickel normal, a little bit of match right there. I had an R1 open, but you know, we'll take it, throw it out of bounds. We're all the way across the field. We don't want to risk a throw. Maybe Nomdi would have got glitchy right there. Right here, man. Gonna run a nice play, and I felt like I had Kittle once more, but there goes Zeke making a nice play, getting us some yards, trucking up field, six yards on that play. And boys, right here, we're gonna run a corner route concept. We hadn't actually ran one once yet, and he actually runs cover three, and it's a perfect play call, man. That corner route with that streak to the tight end, put the out route on the slot receiver. It's actually money versus all types of coverage. Cover two is gonna get over. Match pretty much bags it, but I mean, there's plays against match that you can mix in. Um, cover four quarters is gonna get over it, and cover three gets under it. So, you know, if you if you want a nice play, just mix in that play in bunch. You're gonna find a lot of success. So right here, really just bagged up, good defense. We're gonna throw this ball away with Tannehill. And here, boys, we're gonna mix in a concept that I wish was really popular this year. This post could have been money this year, but Honestly, the way people play defense, it wasn't as good as it could have been. And I just I just get some nice vibes when I throw something like that because in previous Maddens, that's just a dot. Obviously, that's a dot here too, but you don't you don't find yourself throwing a solo side post ever in this Madden. Uh, throw back to like a little Pat Sale, a little, uh, I forgot that one play out of West Coast, but you know, that solo side post action is always a good feeling. Deep attack is the play I was thinking about, boys. Right here, boys. He's back in the strong wing, and after that first drive, I, I kind of know what he wants to do. Things are about to get a little scary for my opponent. Um, I'm feeling a little locked in. After after I score, you know, after someone scores on you, then you score right back. You're like, yeah, I'm 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 gonna be all right. Let's let's get a stop. At least that's how I feel. Um, if it's a whole different type of feeling if you if you give up a touchdown, and you can't score. But you know, it's matching their seven. We do get ball at half. This is where we're gonna start to take over. Um, I'm basically just playing the run right here. I mean, uh, he hasn't shown me he's gonna pass out of this look. We're gonna play the run. He does something super weird, motion out Jim Thorpe, and you know I try to adjust, and he doesn't really have enough time. We're gonna accept that though, boys. And he's all the way backed up at the eight, and then straight to this trio offset. He runs this trap, doesn't really get any yards, but here we go, third down and long, and he goes up tempo, man. Demon type vibes right here. Up tempo, third and 12. I'm gonna blitz the house. I uh, probably shouldn't have blitzed this outside corner, man. And we kind of get a little too down with our user and hits a nice little dot to Ayuk. That's just a nice dot, man. Really nothing you could say. Wish Ronnie Locke could have played better, but he doesn't have Acrobat. He doesn't have any type of mid zone KO. So not gonna sweat it. We're just gonna move on to the next play. And right here, man, he goes back to the deuce close. Run it wham again and Kind of does get a lot of bit, quite a bit, quite a bit of yards, but I mean, at the end of the day, I was spamming that R3 button. If you want to play the run better without actually like selling out, just spam R3 when people run. It's going to send your safeties down and they'll just make better plays on the ball. It's right here, man. We are going to set up the user rush. I told you guys remember this play and there's a reason why. We're going to fake the user rush and pick him off right here. Just look, notice the left side. We're going to have a crazy user. I'm kind of sorry for spoiling it, but boom, we bait him. Pick it off, and there goes T Mays, Taylor Mays, 4 6. We're gonna rewind that one time for the one time. So, boom, we're gonna sit in this A gap, kind of just sit there for a second. Definitely could have sacked him, in my opinion, boys, but no, we wanted this pick six. Very underrated right there. I know a lot of you guys who run on uh, play against under center love to use a rush. Mix that in, though, boys, and you're gonna get a lot of turnovers. Um, just a simple fake user rush. You really don't got to do anything special. You just kind of go in and then go out. And the lurker animations are insane this year that you're going to jump up 50 feet in the air and pick off anything inside. Right here, he's back in deuce close. And I was kind of shocked, man. After what I just seen, I wouldn't think he'd come back out in deuce close. And there goes Mike Evans actually wrecking havoc, forcing him to, you know, get a, uh, what's the word, intentional grounding all the way backed up on a second and 22 early man this game could get out of hand really quickly boys so right here man he's gonna run on one trap again and that trap is really nice i'm telling you but we have a nice little user play if you want to watch that back we kind of loop around but here we go up tempo again and i'm not gonna give up no free points no free dot right here 
Third and 19 is that much more harder to get. It's right here, he's gonna throw it to the tight end and Jalen Ramsey just punches that ball out of the air. Love to see it by Ramsey. And back to offense, the place where we wanna be, man. Um, I always love playing defense, but you know, when we're getting stops, offense is a place to go. And right here, George Kittle, that Ryan Tannehill, dart inside dead eye ability if you want to throw passes on the run boys go get you that inside dead eye it's a huge game changer and man right here i'm really content with just running a couple times seeing what the runs look like and that run looked really really nice in the beginning of the play really kind of just closed up fast but you know i'm just kind of trying to play the clock here maybe get a first but definitely want to score either way whether it be three or seven so we're gonna run the same run. We're gonna run the same run, and I kinda had the same space, and my fat old lineman gets in the way. Gotta love it, man. Um, but we are good, the clock is ticking. We could still get seven, boys. And look at look for Mike Evans. I love doing this every single time. Got a little short and elite action right there. Um, I love doing that, man. Uh, when someone thinks you're running the ball, you just pass. Honestly, that was just really bad defense, but the thing was, I had the two minute warning, no huddle, glitch in my favor. Um, and I made a nice IQ play. I put Mike Evans there. And I think that was Night Train Lane, boys, or Dion, one or the other. Both those cards are not checking Mike Evans in a goal to goal, goal line scenario. We'll take our seven, boys. We get ball a half. This game is really going to get out of hand right here if we get another stop. And that's what we're looking to do. It's right here. Once more, Carey gets. Baited. Taylor Mays is here. Taylor Mays is there. Taylor Mays is everywhere. A little cringy, but hey, we get the job done. And that's what makes under center passing super difficult as you see him flexing up right there. And it was just a simple angle route. We kind of played the whole field. Um, I believe that was that tight end angle play. Oh man, what a throwback. That play used to be money. It is still okay, but how the times have changed, man. Honestly, the times have changed with this user rush mechanic. Um, it's really, really hard to pass out of center, under center with that. And honestly, I feel for my under center brothers. If you run under center and you are trying to pass the rock, it gets tough out here. It's right here. We're going to open up the floodgates with a George Kittle dime. And you know, boys, this is going to be pretty much it for this gameplay. I know it was a little short, but it was a nice little gameplay. I, I had a hidden, couple hidden gems in there for you guys. We do get ball at half. Uh, Kerry actually ends up prolonging the game, but I'm gonna cut forward to the end real quick for you guys See right here, man 31 to 10 ball game. We were basically playing the clock. We did get ball out of half He got three we got three and there goes Moss on a nice little playmaker dot um, To this point Kerry started passing more and he honestly started to dot up if you want some under center dots I could definitely show you some combos he had uh, but for the most part as you see right here He gets cheated Vernon Davis probably no huddling probably tired uh, that's why he gets cheated right there. But yeah, man, Kerry always has some nice under center dots. His Madden mind is pretty crazy. Uh, he just likes to run unique stuff, and I can respect that on 100. He's right here, he's going to run the same play, except he ran it flipped. And then he gets cheated again. Jim Thorpe actually drops the ball. I don't know why he was using him. I think Jim Thorpe's pretty glitchy, though, man. He kind of reminds me of Gale Sayers. Like if you agree with that statement, and there is a quit out, boys. So if you enjoyed this piece of content, boys, this video, leave a like button, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll be back with another video soon, guys. Next video, we're going to play, be playing our Madden Bowl partner, spamming buttons. Um, this would be round four of FNF uh, coming up very, very soon. This video is one you don't want to miss. Uh, a lot of on, And a lot of things you haven't seen in this video. So be on the lookout for that, man. And in the back, you see the Lakers game going on. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Me versus spamming buttons, something you guys don't want to miss. Crazy gameplay on the way.